Welcome to Solutions Studio. This is a free series on C programming language. If you like these videos, please subscribe to follow along with this series. Also, please like and leave a comment and share the video to help spread this series. Hello and welcome to this episode and in this episode we are discussing about recursion. So a recursive function is a function that it calls itself. Either it calls itself directly or indirectly. So as you can see in here we have this function. This function can have many other tasks as well but eventually in one of its statements it calls itself. So function has called itself and that's what we call a recursion. This is basically a direct recursion because the function has directly called itself. We can also have an indirect recursion as well. So basically an indirect recursion is a recursion that this function has been called using another function. For example, this function is calling function 2 and function 2 is actually calling the function itself in one of its statements. So basically this is called an indirect recursion. A function calling itself through another function is an indirect recursion. This concept may be a little bit confusing for you, so stay tuned as we go into more details of recursion in the coming episodes. Hello and welcome to this episode and in this episode we are going to consider recursion conceptually first in this episode and in the coming episodes we are going to examine several programs that are containing recursive functions. Recursive problem solving approach have many elements in common. A recursive function is called to solve a problem. The function actually knows how to solve only the simplest case or so called base case. If the function is called with a base case, it simply returns a result. When the function is called with a more complex problem, the function typically divides the problem into two conceptual pieces. The first conceptual piece is the one that the function knows how to do, and the second one is the one that it does not know how to do. So to make the recursion feasible, the second or the later piece must resemble the original problem but in a slightly simpler or smaller version. Because this new problem looks like the original problem, the function launches or it calls a fresh copy of itself to work on the smaller problem. This is referred to as a recursion call or the recursion step. The recursion step also includes a return statement because its result will be combined with the portion of the problem the function knew how to solve to form a result that will be passed back to the original caller. The recursion step executes while the original call to the function is paused, waiting for the result from the recursion step. The recursion step can result in many more such recursive calls as the function keeps dividing each problem with which it's called into two conceptual pieces. For the recursion to terminate, each time the function calls itself with a slightly simpler version of the original problem. This sequence of smaller problems must eventually converge on the base case. When the function recognizes the base case, it returns a result to the previous copy of the function and a sequence of returns ensues all the way up to the line until the original call of the function eventually returns the final result to its caller. Stay tuned as we cover these concepts in more details with examples in the coming episodes. Hello and welcome to this episode. In this episode and in the coming episodes we will be discussing about calculating factorials recursively and using recursive functions. So I want to introduce you to factorials. The factorial of a number n is equal to n times n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3 and going on until this statement reaches 1. And then we have already defined the value of 1 factorial which is 1 and even the value of 0 factorial which is 1. It is possible for us to find the factorial of a number using four statements. So this is a non-recursive solution. 
This for statement will start a counter which will be equal to the number. Suppose we have the number at 5. So we want to calculate the factorial of 5. It will start from the number and this counter will eventually reach until 1 and in each step of the iteration it will decrease, it will decrement by 1. And inside the for iteration this number is being multiplied to this factorial which is defined as 1. So one time this variable factorial is going to be multiplied by 5, the next time by 4, the next time by 3 and going on until it reaches 1. And finally we have uh, the value of factorial in this variable. As you can see we have defined this variable with a long long integer and it's an assigned integer because factorials cannot be negative. And we have defined it as a very long integer because factorials can get large pretty quickly. And that's why we need a data structure which the length of the data structure must be quite long and it will take a lot of space in memory. Well, this was the solution of a factorial non-recursively using a for iteration. We also have a recursive solution for factorials and the recursive definition of the factorial function is arrived at by observing the following relationship. For example, the factorial, I have forgotten factorial here, so the factorial of a 5 factorial is equal to 5 times factorial of 4. And that's how the sequence will go on. The factorial of 4 is equal to 4 times the factorial of 3. And this way we can observe the relationship that this problem could be solved recursively. So stay tuned as we go and solve this problem recursively with recursive functions in the coming episodes. Hello and welcome to this episode. In this episode we will be discussing about how we are going to calculate the factorial of 5 recursively using recursive functions. So as you can see in here I have the factorial of 5. In fact the factorial of 5 is equal to 5 times factorial of 4. And indeed we can simplify factorial of 4 into 4 times factorial of 3. And in this way we can divide each problem into a simpler problem and finally we come to factorial 1. At the end we have the base case which is factorial 1 and we have a specific answer for factorial 1 which is 1. So finally when we get to the base case here the factorial of 1 the base case returns and provides the value of 1. Then this value is going to be multiplied into 2 and the result of this function provided to the calling function and the result of this function is going to be provided to another calling function and in this way all of the functions they will be returning their values to the first original calling function. And finally we would have the value of 5 factorial. And that's how recursive functions work. Stay tuned as we go into more details of factorials using recursive functions and we will have C programs to solve this problem. Hello and welcome to this episode and in this episode we are going to use recursive functions to solve the factorial problem. Let's go and get started. As you can see, we calculated up to factorial of 21 using recursive functions. Stay tuned as we go into more details and explanation of this program in the coming episodes. 
Hello and welcome to this episode and in this episode let's go and discuss the factorial function that we created in the previous episode. This recursive factorial function it first tests whether a terminating condition is true. For example, this is the terminating condition that if the number is less than or equal to 1, then return 1 and there's no need for more recursion to happen. And if the number is greater than 1, then this statement is going to be returned. This statement states that the number is going to be multiplied by the factorial of the number minus 1. So the factorial function has been called once again by itself and this is where recursion has occurred. As you can see in here that the factorial function of number minus 1 is slightly simpler than the factorial of the number itself. And that's how factorial works. It simplifies the problem until it reaches a very definite answer and from that point on it goes upwards until the real problem. Also, it's very important that you need to have a base case. For us, in this problem, this is our base case, that if the number is less than or equal to 1, then we are going to return 1. And if this base case does not exist, then, then an infinite recursion is going to happen. And usually, infinite recursions, they will exhaust the memory of the computer. Stay tuned as we go into more details of this program in the coming episode. Hello and welcome to this episode and in this episode we are discussing about the fact that factorials can become large pretty quickly. And that's the reason why we have declared this factorial variable as an unassigned long long integer. This combination of data types is able to store up to this number in the memory. But still factorials can become pretty large pretty quickly that even this number is not enough to calculate large numbers of a factorial. You have also noticed that we have used the conversion specification of percent sign LLU for this unassigned long long integer data type. Let's go and execute the program so you can see that the factorial indeed gets large pretty quickly. In fact, if I try to increase it by a few numbers, maybe I want to make this 25 so we can calculate the factorial of 25 you see that we have overflowed this data type already that's why we have got a wrong result because the factorial of 22 is greater than the factorial of 23 that means that our memory was overflowed because this data type cannot hold such long numbers. Stay tuned as we go into more details of this program in the coming episodes. Hello and welcome to this episode and in this episode we will be discussing about the fact that integer types they have limitations. So as you can see that in here even that we have used an unassigned long long integer this data type which is supposed to be long, it still can't calculate factorials that are beyond 21. And this point is one of the weaknesses in procedural programming languages like C. Because in this type of programming language, it's not easy to extend the programming language to handle the unique requirements of various applications. Object-oriented languages like C++, they are different in a way that they are extensible. In C++, through one of the features which we call classes, programmers can create new data types and through these new data types, we could hold arbitrarily very large integers. But as we said before, this is a limitation in C. For example, if we make this 21 up to 25, then we go and execute the program. You can see that here in 22, starting from 22, the number has indeed become smaller instead of becoming larger because an overflow has happened to the integer type, not exactly the integer type, but to the unassigned long long integer type. Even though this number can hold this length of integers, 
it's still not enough to calculate more than 21 factorial. And that's it for this episode. I hope to see you in the coming episodes.